Coming up later in the program, more from Stuart. As many as 680,000 more homes will need to be built in the east over the next 20 years, far more than was originally thought. The new figures have been published by the main planning authority for the region. It wants the public to have a say in where they should all go. Here's our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair. Susie, it was back in 2001 that we were told that this region needed half a million new homes over the next 20 years. And so far, around 160,000 of those homes have been built. But according to the Regional Assembly, we're going to need many more. Anything from an extra 520,000 over the next 20 years to an extra 680,000, depending on which scenario you use. And the main growth areas, Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex. And for some in the region, that's good news. This is Colchester, where demand for housing is high, and so too are the prices. Many can't afford a home here. I'll be looking for myself, and at the moment I wouldn't, wouldn't touch it. I really wouldn't. It's just not affordable to me at the moment. Loads more, you know, people coming to Colchester from London, surrounding areas. So if there's a lot of homes in the town, then obviously it's a good thing, isn't it? The trouble is that Colchester and Essex have already seen a lot of development. Conservation groups are naturally worried. District councils have been struggling to accommodate the number of houses proposed in the current East of England plan. And any increase over and above that is bound to have a lot of pressure on our countryside and on our farmland. But the region's population is continuing to grow. The latest estimates expect an extra one and a quarter million people living here by 2031. It's an unenviable task deciding where to put so many new homes. So the Regional Assembly has decided to publish all the data and projections and ask the public where they think they should go. It's very important that the public do engage. We've had a, a crisis over the house building industry. We need to understand what is needed around the region. The final numbers will be decided next year, but whatever is decided, it's clear we're going to have to accept many more new homes. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East. Two people have been charged in connection with the death of a 17-year-old boy from South End. Matthew Deere died in April. His parents released these pictures when he was critically ill to warn others of the dangers of taking steroids. A young man and a teenage boy from Westcliff have now been charged with various drug offences. A Royal Marine shot dead in Afghanistan by the Taliban was described as a hero by the coroner in Kings Lynn today. Lance Corporal Ben Watley from Tittershall near Fakenham was shot on Christmas Eve. The coroner concluded that he'd been killed by opposing forces while on active military service. A.D. Boothroyd is Colchester United's new manager. The former Watford boss was widely tipped to get the job after Paul Lambert resigned to join Norwich two weeks ago. It was football's worst kept secret, but these things are never really official until the new manager is at the club holding up a shirt or a scarf. Either will do. Colchester chairman Robbie Cowling took his time to appoint. Loads of applications, loads of interviews and at the end both manager and chairman agreed it would be a perfect marriage. This day and age we, uh, we hear horror stories about chairman and uh, chief executives and everybody uh, picking the team and, and everything else and I uh, was lucky enough to, to cross paths with uh, with Robbie and uh, I immediately liked him. I've always been someone that sees them, um, tries to see an opportunity in every problem and I think it certainly turned out like that for, for the club. Um, it was interesting that when, when the job came up we had some very, very good applicants apply as you can see from, from the man who's finally got the job. A.D. Boothroyd coached at Norwich and Peterborough but made his name at Watford where he took them to the Premier League and to an FA Cup semi-final. On the Colchester job he says he wants to give the town something to smile about. A town like Colchester with obviously what's going on uh, in various conflicts throughout the, the world, we've got garrison here and, and you know people are losing lives which puts things in perspective. I want to be part of making the, uh, the town uh, smile. Uh, and making sure that people uh, are proud to say where they come from. When Collew lost at Gillingham last night, A.D. Boothroyd watched from the stands. After ten months out of work, a kind of gap year for managers, he's itching to get in the dugout, starting on Saturday away to Southampton. Sean Peel, BBC Look East. Colchester played last night and didn't have a great result, but it was better news for Norwich City in the Johnston's paint trophy. Jonathan Park reports. New Colchester manager A.D. Boothroyd probably won't shed too many tears about his team crashing out of the Johnson's paint trophy at Gillingham last night. In truth, he'd much prefer a decent run in the FA Cup this season. 
Big striker Clive Platt made it one all in normal time, but neither side could find a winner. Boothroyd will have learnt one thing about his side, though. They need to brush up on their penalties, losing 4-3 in the shootout with David Perkins bringing back memories of Chris Waddle. It's not a competition that Norwich are used to playing in, but a young and experimental side made it through against Brentford at Carrow Road. Chris Martin did have JPT experience from his time with Luton last season, and his excellent goal was the difference. They joined Southend in round two, who received a bye this time. Jonathan Park, BBC Look East. Grant Ledbetter says he can't wait to play for manager Roy Keane again. The Sunderland midfielder was unveiled at Ipswich Town today. Keane has made no secret of wanting to sign him since he joined the club. Lead stolen from a church roof in Essex is the latest item to be recovered using smart water. These are using Google Earth to find metal on church roofs. St. Leonard's in Colchester was treated with a chemical, giving it a unique code, and the stolen metal has now been identified and returned. Now we can go back to Stuart, who's at Impington Village College in Cambridgeshire. Welcome back. From tomorrow, our schools go back after the summer holidays. We're here because cases of swine flu in this region are expected to increase tenfold as our children go back to school and winter sets in. Doctors know they will be on the front line in the second wave of the virus. Emma Ball has been to Corby. Morning, can I help you? Here at the Lakeside Surgery, there's always pressure on time. But even in this last wave of swine flu, staff have kept services running. Tom Maxwell is now safe to return to the surgery, having been given the all clear after contracting the virus. I just stayed in bed most of the time. I was, I'd say I couldn't, I couldn't get up. I was too weak to get up. And it's, it's the tiredness as well. You're just, you're just so tired with it. It's, you, you can't do anything else really but sleep and drink and go back to sleep again. So if you listen to everybody what they're saying, you could worry too much about the whole thing. So you just treat it like a flu and hopefully, hopefully you get, get over it. So that, that was Tom Maxwell was one of those affected in the first wave of the virus, but an even larger peak is expected from when the schools return. The worst case scenario for Northamptonshire is that at the peak there may be anything up to 40,000 people off sick. And I think one of the main challenges that faces the county is probably the absenteeism, both of people with the illness and also of people who are looking after people. Plans are already in place to deal with the next wave. Frontline staff are ready. They want information, but they want diagnosis. Um, we are not medically trained, obviously, so everything has to be put down to the doctor, to the return the call. My experience of the general public is that they have been incredibly pragmatic and sensible about this, have accepted that the service is under pressure and have been quite willing to accept that if they're not acute and seriously ill, that they can see the doctor a bit later on. With the onset of the flu season, doctors say the age-old remedies are still the best, but people shouldn't ignore symptoms and make a call if they're worried. Emma Ball, BBC Look East, Corby.